I think I've finally thought of the way to explain how good the system is. It is a local maxima on the graph of best bang for the buck. So at a certain price point, the very low end, spending very little money, maybe getting a used computer, or like the old Xeon stuff of the olden days, I'm not sure that that's still a good deal. There's a certain uh, area around the price where you get a lot more bang for your buck. And if you spend a little bit more, you don't really get much more. And if you spend less, a little bit less, you get dramatically less out of it. And so this build is kind of in the middle. Like you're spending a, a decent amount of money, but the bang for the buck is huge. We're gonna build a Ryzen 5 based system. Uh, with a, We're gonna look at the 3600X versus the 3600. Now AMD sent me the 3600X. I picked up a 3600. This is the 3600X. I can tell you that the 3600X, you know, not for, not for resale sample from AMD versus the 3600, there are differences in silicon quality. Uh, AMD is shockingly good at binning their CPUs. The 3600, you can overclock to be just like a 3600X. So, yeah. But the 3600, if you're doing, or 3600X, if you're doing manual overclocking, you can get a little bit better overclocks out of it. Now, I think personally, right now, PBO, uh, or Precision Boost 2, and the automatic OC is basically broken right now. It doesn't really do much of anything on any CPU. Me personally, I have the best luck if I use um, two pea-sized dots of thermal paste basically over top of where the chiplets are uh, and I don't push the memory past about 34, uh, 35, 33 to tw between 29, 33 and 35, 33. And uh, it, uh, it also seems to work better if I run it at like the two to one infinity fabric as opposed to one to one, but one to one generally works better, 35, 33. There's all kinds of like anecdotal stuff if you want in on that conversation, come to the level one forum because I'm not prepared to make any kind of like universal statement because there's so much variability in CPUs. With the CPUs that I have, uh, some work better with the 1.0.0.2 Agiza and some work better with the 1.0.0.3 Agiza. And trying to isolate all of the variables and what type of CPU cooler you have and it's, it's just too much. The 3600X, you buy it, you plug it in, you put the cooler on it, you set everything on normal AMD defaults, you're good to go, it's fine. The 3600 is not going to be quite as fast as the 3600X in that scenario, but it's pretty darn close. The other big difference is the cooler. So the 3600X, this is the cooler that you get. It's basically a big old slab of copper with a nice fan on it. It's a good cooler, but the 3600, it's a much smaller cooler. It's much lower profile. This cooler is, if you pop the plastic thing off, is actually small enough to fit in some small form factor cases like the Dr. Zaber build or uh, even the ASRock Desk Mini, although you really should get a Ryzen Plus Vega for the Desk Mini because there's no graphics option. I would have preferred to see the Copper Slug variant. This is from second gen uh, Ryzen. And so it, you know, it looks almost identical, but it's got a Copper Slug. And this performs a little a little bit better. So I would say that, you know, don't take into account that you're getting a better CPU cooler with the 3600X. It is marginally better, but it's not as good as the cooler that come with the, like the, the Ryzen 5, or the Ryzen 7 3700X, or the Ryzen 9 3900X. Those coolers are, are genuinely very good, direct touch heat pipe, which is great in this chiplet generation. For this build, I'm also recommending the Radeon 5700. Not the XT, but the 5700. So we're talking about a relatively monster gaming machine compared to you know what we would be spending money on a year ago or uh, two years ago. So it's 1440p. It's basically going to be a 1440p monster or a really high frame rate 1080p monster. Let's take a look at the benchmarks. As you can see from the game benchmarks, we've got Monster Hunter World and Shadow of the Tomb Raider and those types of games. 
The 3600X is basically at the same performance as the 3700X, at the same performance as the 9900K. Possible 9900K, Intel, Intel 9900K, the possible exception there is at 1080p. 1080p gaming, if you've got an insanely powerful graphics card, the 9900K will outpace the Ryzen offerings. Good deals on storage. Team Group. Team Group has won the, uh, the budget build uh, Ramathon. So this is the, the team group. This is DR4 3000. It's a 16 gig kit. It's 16, 18, 18, 38 timings. Now, Ryzen likes fast memory. DDR4 3000 is something a lot of people are going to pass over. But you can see from the benchmarks that even DDR4 3000 gives you a pretty good performance uplift. So the 5700 or the 5700 XT is a monster powerhouse graphics card for the price point that it's at and when paired with a cpu like a 3600 or the 3600 x if you want to spend the extra bucks and not have to fiddle with it that is a monster monster gaming machine six cores means that it's basically future proof for at least the next couple of years i really think that in a lot of games four cores is not enough you're a little bit more constrained and it's a better upgrade path i think than buying an apu like the ryzen 5 3400g that'll give you four cores eight threads and built-in video and that'll get you up and running immediately very inexpensively and you can add a graphics card to that later but you're still going to be limited to four cores eight threads and you can, you know, swap that CPU for another CPU, but and then sell the CPU, and it's it's a more complicated situation. But for this build, 5700 XT and the 3600. Now you may be thinking, what do I need to do for motherboard? Here's an AB350 that was on sale at Micro Center, because it's an AB350 motherboard. If you're gonna buy, yeah, a third gen Ryzen with a 350. If you're gonna buy an older motherboard, especially if it's a 350, an AB350 or or a B350 or um, uh, X370 you want to make sure that the motherboard manufacturer offers support in the form of an updated BIOS that supports your CPU. The Aorus B450 Pro Wi-Fi, this is a B450, this is one generation newer, it'll work fine, and because it's B450, you're pretty much guaranteed that there's gonna be UEFI support from day one. Now you could do a five, you know, an X570 motherboard, but for this kind of a build, kind of wasting money. Doesn't really make sense. You can get any, you know, these motherboards, you can get in a Cracker Jack box, basically. Um, 50 to $100, 50 is at like the clearance side of things, which it's probably gonna be harder to find motherboards at that price point now because you, third gen Ryzen is out and people are buying the lower end third gen Ryzen to use with older motherboards, which is fine. Um, so I think probably around $100 for your motherboard budget is reasonable that will get you a decent motherboard. There's also the uh, the B450 Tomahawk, the B350 Tomahawk. Both of those are, are great boards, although you still have to you know, double check compatibility because I think the B350 Tomahawk, there was some question of compatibility and let's work on that. So don't quote me on the B350 Tomahawk, but the B450 Tomahawk, I put a 3900X in the B450 Tomahawk and it was basically fine. Uh, about five to 10% performance loss and you're not gonna be really overclocking on that motherboard, but performance was fine. All right, back to the benchmarks. So we've got our other games here like Fire Strike and Time Spy. And if you look at the performance of these games and these benchmarks on the 3600 and the 3600X, they're basically on par with the 9900K. They're basically on par with the 3700X and the 3900X. For gaming workloads, the difference between six and eight cores or six and 12 cores really isn't much. You may be thinking, what do I use for the power supply? Well, you could go name brand, see Sonic. This is a 520 watt power supply, which for everything here, this is still kind of overkill. You could even go a little under this. We've also got the FSP Group 380 watt power supply. It, it just barely, just barely will be enough for all of this. And it's just because of the connectors that it has. You get the PCI Express power connections for your 5700 graphics card and a single CPU eight pin power connector. And that's, that's basically it, a couple device connectors. That's basically it, that's all you get. For storage, I did go with the Team Group SATA hard drive, but if you have a few extra bucks, an NVMe uh, M.2, would be better. You can go with SATA M.2 to just have, you know, it's like the gumstick SSD, uh, but NVMe is better because it's a PCI Express interface. So this will top out at about 500 megabytes per second, read and write, best case scenario. It could actually even be slower depending on, you know, how full the drive is and some other factors. But with NVMe where it's a PCI Express interface, 
generally it's gonna be much faster. And Team Group does have a number of M.2 drives, so you know, shop around online and see what you can find a deal on in terms of M.2 or SATA. If you're on a super, super tight budget, SATA's fine, and you can always upgrade to an NVMe drive later. You probably already know, but just in case you don't, don't use a mechanical hard drive if you can possibly help it. We're at a point in time where, you know, a terabyte of flash memory is under $100. And at that kind of a price point, it doesn't make sense to waste your time waiting on a mechanical hard drive. So that's pretty much it for the roundup of parts. Now you may be thinking, wait, you didn't cover a case. Literally anything will work for a case. You can even do without a case if you're on a really crazy budget. You can just have stuff laying there. The motherboard is going to come with SATA cables and the other stuff that you need to hook stuff up. Uh, you've got your graphics card, you've got your power supply, you got your CPU. Now I really want to do an on-screen total to show you how, how good of a deal this is and how little money that you could spend to get a really awesome 1440p gaming machine. I mean, I don't want to say that it's a little bit of money because it's, you know, it's probably a lot of money to a lot of people, but it is shocking how much performance you get from this setup, how well things run than just a couple of years ago. Okay, so what's the final verdict on our 3600, 3600X build? Well, the 3600X CPU is about $50 more expensive than the 3600. Its base clock is higher, the 3600X, and the boost clock is also higher. It's 4.2 versus 4.4. So you really start to be able to build a budget system with CPUs like the 3600 or the 3600X plus the 5700, not the XT. And it is shocking how fast this system really is. I mean, the bench, it's, it's unbelievable. It's not credible how fast this system is. If you look at where we were just a few years ago with four cores on the desktop, AMD has completely changed the landscape because this, you know, a $200 Ryzen 5 3600 plus the 5700 is basically an unstoppable gaming machine. You throw in some inexpensive but good RAM, you know, you could do the Team Group RAM like I did for this build and a cheap SATA SSD like the Team Group SATA SSD and then upgrade later. It's like, oh, I want to get a PCI Express NVMe for this later. All right do that when you can afford it. It's, it's incremental upgrades over time. It'll be a while before you need to upgrade your CPU. It'll be a while before you need to upgrade something else if you want to. It's, it's shockingly inexpensive for what it is, but it's an amazingly good gaming machine. I can't believe how good it is considering that it's, you know, relatively budget. So I guess the next budget class is going to be Ryzen plus Vega, right? Yeah. I've got a build queued up for that as well. And it's also shockingly good value, but I don't want to spoil that. I'll see you next time. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out, and I'll see you in the forums. Oh, I almost forgot. The 5700. Now, the 5700 that I used for this build is a reference 5700. Rumor has it that the 5700s that are coming in from AIB partners are going to be priced about the same. You know, that's pretty cool you know I'd say that though there's a little bit of margin there probably up to fifty dollars but at the you know ten twenty thirty dollar above like three ninety nine plus ten twenty thirty or whatever I don't know there's those are just rumors I can't confirm those you can google that that's a thing that's happening so yeah if you can get a 5700 at MSRP with an upgraded cooler from an AIB partner it's an even sweeter deal.